So just as a, a way of introduction, my name is Mike Zach. I am the Chief Operating Officer for Actares, and I have some really, really exciting news for everyone on the, on the call today, which is going to cover the new release wave that was released last week. When we think about Actares or everyone that's on the call that's utilizing the Actares platform today, really the, the core focus of our business is around planning. Now, that could be taken in a lot of different directions, financial planning, sales planning, inventory planning. It can get to a point where we have clients that do brand excellence planning, labor planning, and the, the ideas are limitless. And today, what I want to showcase not only is the specific features that we released, but also how do you access more additional help online. We've completely revamped our knowledge base to include a lot more videos and step-by-step -step guides for individuals that want to learn a little bit more about Actaris. And I also want to talk a little bit more about what we call rapid result packs, which are pre-packaged solutions that, that solve different business challenges. What we're starting to see with our clients is that they start off with a specific use case, let's say sales planning as an example. And they start to then branch out into the organization to collect more data from different individuals or different departments. So they may want to then utilize us for financial planning. They may want to use us to collect data from field managers. So there's so many different types of applications that can be designed with the foundation of Actaris and the Microsoft ecosystem. That is what we call augmented business applications. The best way to think about this in the context of a consumer market is the Apple App Store. Apple created the Apple App Store with all of the tools associated with building applications. And what happened was developers came in and they started to build these applications and distribute those to consumers. We want to create the same type of ecosystem, but from a business to business standpoint where users can come in and create all kinds of unique solutions for their business that help solve different business problems and ultimately collect data, not only from source systems, but also collect data from humans, as well as AI generated material and bring all of that into a single source of truth. So when you're watching today's webinar, please keep an open mind of all the different types of applications. And if you think about most applications that you use in today's world, CRM, an ERP system, an HRIS system, there's really three main components of these platforms. There's an output layer, there's an input layer, and there's a calculation layer. And if we use Salesforce as a quick example, Salesforce has all three. You have a UI that you log into to view the data. You also have a UI that you log into input data. It may go through certain calculations and it will ultimately write back to a single source of truth. Now, take that concept and imagine Salesforce without an input mechanism, meaning you can only log into Salesforce and just review data. 50% of the application would go away and people would be extremely upset because it's a data collection tool used for sales planning. Now, take that concept and now migrate it over to the Microsoft and the Actaris ecosystem. Actaris empowers the Power BI and Excel interfaces to now allow for input. Right? So Power BI mostly is an output and a calculation engine. With Actaris, it allows for that input. So now you can create all these unique applications and collect data, bring it into a single source of truth, and distribute that or connect it to different business goals. So that's what we're gonna primarily focus on as the theme today is increasing that planning experience for all individuals within an organization. So without further ado, let's go into a brief agenda on what we're gonna be covering today. We're gonna to talk about the 24.1 release wave, which was released last Wednesday and all the various features. We have a dedicated page on our website, which I will walk you through here in just a moment. And that page will highlight the, the main features of that release and also where you can get access to additional information because there was over 100 new features that were added to the Actaris platform. We'll also talk about that knowledge base revamp and training that is now available to all users of Actaris to get more familiar with the technology and allow yourself the ability to create these endless applications for the business to help reduce and deprecate 
what is known as the SaaS sprawl. A lot of businesses have multiple, multiple systems, and a lot of these systems are doing the same thing. But we want to be able to come in and help reduce that landscape, increasing user adoption and decreasing IT resources needed to configure and connect all of these systems. We'll talk about what is known as rapid result packs and different examples of, of use cases of how people have been able to apply our technology to their business. And then uh, we'll go really in depth with a live demo that covers these new use cases. So let's start with Actaris 24.1. If you head to our website, just actaris.com, you'll notice that there's a banner here at the top that talks about the introduction of 24.1, which is the new release wave, and that's what we're going to be covering today. At the very top section, you will be able to hear a message directly from our CRO, just speaking about the company overview, things that have happened over the last year that, that might be uh, very exciting for everyone to know. If you scroll down, you can see this is the live webinar that we are currently on for as a registration page and that will go away and then it'll be uh, the, the video will be uploaded to this page. Then we have this concept in these pillars from a development standpoint. These pillars are, are the foundation of how we develop our software and the key categories that we need to make sure that is incorporated when we're developing Actaris. And that is fast, effective, smart, and secure. Those are the four fundamental pillars. So when we think about the first one being fast, we're constantly trying to improve the technology and make sure that everything that you use within Actaris is extremely fast. And with this newest version and the AAD authentication with the booster engine that we've enabled within all of our clients' environments, you will start to see a significant increase in performance up to 5X. And that includes write back capabilities directly through Excel, as well as Power BI. Next, we have effective. We want to make sure that teams are extremely effective when using our technology without having to learn a completely new product. We're encouraging individuals to learn familiar tools like Excel and Power BI, which are ubiquitous tools that can be used across the entire organization and are great career advancement tools. So the, the effective solution is going to be focusing primarily on our Excel add-in and our new Actaris functions within the Excel environment. Third, we have smart, constantly trying to innovate and include AI into our, our solution. Microsoft has done a great job of including Copilot within Power BI and Excel. We are working side by side with them to make sure that our technology, our write back technology and planning, uh, parallel planning engine, all are embedded within Copilot. So it's, it will allow you to write back data using a natural language. For example, increase my revenue by 10% instead of me physically typing that into one of our visuals, our write back visuals you will be able to use that natural language through Copilot to perform that action. And then last but not least, one of the most important fields and, and areas of focus for Actaris is security. Enabling security across the platform, making sure that everyone's using it in the same way, that MFA is enabled, you're using Azure Active Directory or the new Microsoft Entra, which is similar. Uh, we're always going for new certifications. We have our SOC 2 certification and going for our ISO certification, which is ISO 27001. Down below, you'll see a slide that will incorporate high level overview of all the individual features. So the first few were kind of that high level. These are more things like right back to fabric, our new Business Central connector, multi-level commenting. So a little bit more details related to some of the, the 100 features that were released. And then at the very bottom, this is the most exciting. And I'm actually going to give you a preview of one of these today. These are the game-changing features that, we're going to, that are going to be coming out in Q4 of 2024. That will be release wave 24.2 later this year. This is going to incorporate the new smart Excel visual. What we're doing is completely revolutionary. We're, we are bringing Excel to Power BI. So if you think about that for a moment, your Excel experience and all the Excel knowledge that you have 
will now be a visual in Power BI, and it will be enabled to push data back to the database or write back data through that parallel planning engine to provide insights back into Power BI. So providing that level of structure, but keeping the flexibility of that user experience that everyone knows and loves. Next, we have what we call Process Manager. There's a brief preview of that if you wanna watch the video on this page. Process Manager is a lot of things. It's gonna allow people to create workflows, email notifications where you won't actually have to, you won't need Power Automate, you can actually just leverage Actaris for that type of structure. It's a, a no code type of platform, drag and drop with different visuals. Very exciting because there's gonna be endless use cases that I know our clients are gonna be able to use it for. And then last but not least, hearing a lot of feedback from our clients, we are gonna be introducing something called My Actaris. My Actaris is a unified web experience. Right now, users are logging into Power BI or Excel or the Actaris modeler for different types of functions. We're bringing all of this together inside of the modeler. So when you go into the modeler, you can use this as a collaboration tool to communicate with other team members across multiple reports. You'll be able to use it to understand all of your tasks for that time period that were tagged to you based on that process manager or workflow. And last but not least, you'll also be able to connect My Actaris, which is the Actaris modeler, uh, where, what everyone knows of the Actaris modeler today. It'll allow you to connect to your Excel reports and your Power BI reports with direct linkage to those. So you'll have a central or control center of all of your planning capabilities in one place, which is going to be called My Actaris. So very, very exciting features that we've released that we're gonna talk about today, as well as what we have planned to release later this year. So let me go back here and, and go through a few more slides. Uh, oops, that's not what I wanted. There we go. So just to recap, some of the new features and updates that will that have been released and will be released later this year. We have that My Terrace that I just talked about, same thing with Smart Excel. We will be releasing an AI matching engine which allows for direct reconciliation or mapping of new GL codes, making it a lot easier and throw and putting AI on top of that for that more uh, high level touch. The booster engine, which was released, increasing that performance. And we're constantly going to be doing that over the years to come. Logic driven dimensions. This is gonna be a powerful feature of being able to interconnect data models. We've released a version control feature as well as the new connector for Business Central. And what we're gonna heavily talk about today is gonna be the Actaris functions or Actaris write back functions. Now we are only able to, in an hour session together, really scratch the surface or the tip, tip of the iceberg. But if you have any more questions or you would like to see anything more detail, I, I definitely encourage you to reach out to your sales manager or your account manager and more than happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one call. So we constantly are over training our staff and we would want to extend that now over to all of our partners and clients. We have spent a significant investment in our knowledge base and increasing the knowledge associated with that, that knowledge base. And what I mean by that is embedding workflows, embedding videos, embedding step-by-step -step guides. So just making it very easy from a user standpoint. Demo templates, we have a variety of them, or what we now call rapid result packs, which are accelerators to specific projects. If you're working on sales planning as an example, you can use that as a starting point and then modify from there. I mentioned earlier the training program that we've initiated, which goes in depth with Actaris and how to actually start using Actaris from day one and all the nuances that uh, you can play around with. And then access to resources being able to provide sales material, one, uh, one pagers, our SOC compliance uh, certification, any type of resources that you need, we're now making it more readily available to our clients and partners. As I mentioned in the very beginning, one of the biggest things that we wanna be able to do is build a better future for all of us. And to do that is built on the foundation of this fast, effective, smart, and secure framework. 
Now we have our vision and goals for 2024 into 2025. And that is going to be just brand awareness, focusing on users that may be leveraging Power BI and Excel today, but not necessarily Actaris, which goes back to my Salesforce example. Salesforce probably wouldn't have grown as fast if it was just a reporting tool. But since they have the ability to input information directly within Salesforce, that's where they saw a significant amount of growth. And we're also bringing that to these ubiquitous tools. We want to constantly embrace our new value pillars across development, across sales, across account management, and extend those value pillars out to our customers and partners to make sure that everyone is aligned in what we are working with and make sure that our values align to your values. Partners, we are enhancing our partner network, not just the number of partners, but empowering our partners to really get in-depth knowledge with our technology so they can certainly support you going forward. We are growing rapidly. We've added roughly around 20 people this year. We'll probably add another 20 people within the next six months and then going into next year, a significant amount more. This is to help with clients. So support, heavily investing in support, heavily investing in development. All of our profits get put back into the product, which means that it all comes back to the end user. So any feedback you have on the solution, please feel free to share that. We constantly want to be better. We're never going to say we're perfect. And that's why we want to be able to hear from the people that are using this on a day-to-day -day basis. And constantly st challenging the status quo. Right? We've This was kind of born and bred with when we started the organization and Martin and Hassam, the two co-founders, was really going against the grain, right? They had the option of being able to build a planning solution in a traditional way. But what we ended up doing was building a planning application where the data ends up. So you're really using tools you're already familiar with and making things more self-service. And bonus, that we have won several awards this year, mostly the Gartner Award. We are now in the Magic Quadrant for Gartner. The Hackett Group uh, were a visionary there, uh, Infotech, uh, Nucleus Research, and also the FP&A guys. So if you follow any of those channels, you should see a more and more of Actaris being visible there. Last year, we signed a strategic partnership with Microsoft. Microsoft has embedded our solution in Dynamics FNO providing all of their customers now with Actaris and the planning engine that you all know and love. We have uh, invested heavily on business apps, not only internally, but also with our partners. This is the ability to create unique solutions, which I'll cover in the next slide of some examples to get you thinking a little bit more outside the box. Not just what you're using Actaris for today that you can apply this to, but also other use cases that you can extend the Actaris platform into. We are considered problem solvers. Every time someone has an issue, either with Microsoft PowerPoint, which is not our product, we still are able to help. You have questions around SQL, you have questions around Excel. We're kind of that one-stop shop for all of our customers to come to us and ask questions and for us to solve any type of problem they may be having. And this is not just system problems. This is also business problems. You know, there might be certain cases where you're frustrated because of the process that you have with your sales planning. Coming to us and understanding some best practices of what other organizations have done around sales planning in, in this example, we're also willing and able to share those experiences with you because we want everyone that interacts with Actaris to, to make sure that they're receiving value at the end of the day. Establishing goals. I encourage everyone that's using the platform today to work with your account manager, your sales rep to understand what your goals are for the next 12 to 18 months. And where does Actaris fit inside of that? If we know what help you need, we can be more proactive versus reactive to solving those and helping with those solutions. And then showing value, you know, instant proof of concepts that we can perform to show value to other team members to get them to expose to the technology. Once again, we it's very easy to implement the solution, uh, depending on the complexity, of course, but ultimately being able to showcase the uniqueness of this platform to other stakeholders internally, we are more than happy to do. So once again, please feel free to reach out to your account manager to, um, to, to trigger that process. I talked about the awards that we won this year. Here's kind of just a little bit of a landscape. 
software reviews, Gartner, Forster, G2, and also Nucleus Research. When we think about the Actera's platform, now this is a platform play, we have three different solutions that we've created on a single platform. We have Actaris Apps, which is an end-to-end -end financial reporting and consolidation platform. We have Actaris XPNA Suite, which is more of that traditional uh, planning component where you have your sales planning, your financial planning, your inventory planning. And then we have augmented business applications, which leads me to the examples of what is an augmented business application. It's a collection of data from source systems, from humans, from AI into a single source of truth, and then building an application around that data. So the application, once again, adheres to outputs, inputs, and calculations. That's what drives a, a robust application. So here are three individual examples. We have hundreds of examples, but short amount of time together. And I want to get right into a live demo of some of the features that we released. We have labor planning. So we had one client that um, wanted to be able to focus on in, uh, allocating human resources for different departments, be able to incorporate labor standards into those particular calculations to make sure that they adhere to those labor standards. So very exciting project that we went live with. Project planning. Uh, you'll see a webinar coming up here in September. We also will have a white paper on this project. Uh, we were able to replace Microsoft Teams project. And this was where they wanted to be able to connect all of their products that they had going on within the organization back to the, the finance department or their PL. And they can see who's spending the most time on projects, who's allocated to specific projects, move people around if they needed to optimize the, the project management. All of that can now be done in Actaris versus Microsoft Planner, Excel, and a little bit of Power BI. So we kind of deprecated those three platforms and kind of roped it into one. And then last but not least, we have a branch excellence report that we created for an organization that allowed different branches to input their goals and how they were going to achieve those goals. And over time, they were able to keep track of each of them and then zoom out to see all the branches. They have over they have thousands of branches that they were able to zoom out and see which branches are performing well, which ones are not performing well, and start cross-referencing data that's been inputted into the Actera's platform to see what's make what's driving the success versus the failures of these individual branches. So extremely powerful, powerful applications that were designed using the core elements of Actera's. Last slide, and then we'll jump into a live demo. Just want to speak to the fact that we are uh, have always been and will continue to be a global team. We're constantly adding new countries that we're penetrating. This is the current uh, list of countries that we operate in. So trying to provide our clients a 24 by 7 ex uh, experience and support. So this is another constant investment within the team to grow it internationally and make sure that we have the entire world covered for your support. So without further ado, if you do have any questions, please feel free to include those in the side panel of the webinar today. I will address those, try to address those at the very end. At the very least, we'll take those questions and we will individually send you responses. But with that, that being said, let's go into the product demonstration. And what I would like to do is start with Excel. Excel is a very powerful and flexible solution, but it does come with some negatives. It's the data typically is stored in the Excel template and not dispersed across the organization. So you're now creating with every Excel template a siloed solution, even though you have that flexibility, which everyone knows and loves. Data governance is a huge thing, auditability, security control of what people can do, what people can see, all of that, which is native to Actaris, is now going to be available to everyone within Excel. Some of you have probably already played with our Excel online add-in. We've made significant advancements to this. Uh, one of those advancements is even being able to, uh, not for this release, but for the next release, do all of your data modeling. So right now, you can go into the Actaris modeler, create your dimensions, and create your cubes, whereas now you'll be able to do all of that directly within Excel, and that data will write back to the, the engine. So that will become a very powerful feature. You can see there's already a placeholder here for that, uh, but that is not something that I'll be able to demo today. 
What I want to showcase is what we call these Actaris functions. What these Actaris functions will do is they will allow for direct write back capabilities within a Excel report. So let's say, for example, we have this Asus ZenBook here, ZenBook Pro, which has a quantity of, sorry, the quantity here of 15. Now, just to show you the kind of the before and after, I'm going to go into a Power BI report, and you're going to see, if I scroll down to ZenBook Pro, that same 15 is there. What I want to be able to do now is in Excel, I want to change this number to, let's say, 20. So I've made that modification. It's recalculated all of my metrics within Excel before I actually hit save. So I can see if this makes sense, if I like the results of this. If this looks good, I can go ahead and hit the Save button. This is going to write this data back to the database. And now if I come back into my Power BI report and you see the ZenBook Pro being 15, you're going to see that before and after. So this is now going to change to 20. Same concept applies if I were to change this within the Actaris matrix visual. I can change it from here. It'll also then update Excel. So the idea is that you can use an Excel interface or a Power BI interface and write back data through that planning engine. You can create all kinds of unique reports, linkages to your reports. So this is a very powerful feature because you can use the same format that you already have today. It just needs to have that Actaris function enabled within the intersection of that data so it knows what to write back to. This goes on a little bit more. So we have quantity, we have price, and we have revenue. The idea of this was supposed to replicate what we already built in Power BI. So you can have both interfaces that you can interact with and be able to write back, but everyone is using that single source of truth. Now think about how powerful that, just that one feature, which again, we'll get into more features here in just a moment. But instead of me updating my Excel spreadsheet, saving it on my desktop or in the cloud, it's, it's saving it to a database, which means that everyone that is using that data point, either in a Power BI report, in a PowerPoint presentation, in a Teams channel, or in Excel, everything is updated instantly based on that. So we want to repurpose existing technology that people are familiar with, but, but adding value to these different solutions. So that's kind of part one. Part two is even more beneficial to users. Here we have an example of a PNL statement. Now this could be any type of Excel spreadsheet. There is no difference between my spreadsheet and your, your spreadsheet other than the look and feel and the calculations, but the functions are still the same. What we want to be able to do is we want to make it easier for the end user where they don't have to necessarily adhere to our structures. We want to adhere to their structures. Now, for the last 20, 25 years, I have constantly heard software systems say, well, Excel is dead. You don't use Excel anymore. Use our platform. And that's just not the case. Everyone still uses Excel. So we're kind of taking it in a different direction where we, we are coming to the market and saying, continue to use Excel but enhance the Excel experience with all the negative things that Excel comes with, which we talked about earlier, data governance, audit trailability, control, all of those things, which is what Actaris brings to the table. So let's all pretend for a moment that this is a PL statement that you have created in Excel before you've used Actaris. What most Excel spreadsheets will do is you'll have multiple tabs across the bottom, which feed into a consolidation tab. And that's what this profit and loss tab is for. For example, we have for product one, 137,500 for fiscal year 2024. That's what we have calculated. Now we have a different data model in a separate tab, which is giving us that calculation. So if I come in, I change this to 1500, it's gonna adjust the number to 187,500. And you'll see then this consolidated report will also change. This is purely Excel, which everyone already knows. You might have one for position planning. I can come in here, I can change. I'm gonna hire five people for this position. I'm gonna hire two people for this position. This is the salary associated with it. Over here on the right, we wanna be able to change what the increase is gonna be over the next you know, four or five years. We can go ahead and specify that, which is gonna go through all of its recalculated figures. 
And that's going to again feed into the consolidation report, which is our profit and loss tab. And the same thing will work with TNE. It doesn't matter what your current Excel spreadsheets look like today or how they get consolidated. Once they once they get consolidated into one spreadsheet, which brings all this information together, what we can then do is create this last tab. Now you can hide this last tab. You don't necessarily need to um, you don't necessarily need to use it uh, within within this. Um, but what we can do is we can go ahead and specify. Probably should have checked this earlier. Give me one moment here. Let me just uh, close this out and uh, relaunch it in my production environment. All right. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to come back to this. Looks like someone messed with my sheet today, which is not good. Um, well, let me let me go through, and I can send another video to everyone. We have this recorded, and I apologize. Someone messed with my sheet and. They shouldn't have. But um, the idea here is that when you have this high level consolidated spreadsheet, you're going to be able to go in and this is going to have that recorded number using an Actaris function. We have this function because we need to know where we're sending the data, which is the coordinates of the um, the dimensions in the cube. So where are we writing back data? So here we have a Power BI report. If I go ahead and click on this edit button here, you can see everything that you're that you know about Power BI today. There's this this new visual called the Actera Smart Excel visual. What I want to be able to do here is go in and start to modify data. Now I can create my reports, and I'll, I'll walk you through how you can also import existing Excel spreadsheets into this visual in just a moment. But really, the main purpose here is it it, it looks and feels like the same template that you're used to, except we're in Power BI. Or we're in Power BI. And let's say that I want to change something. I want to change the percent here. And this is going to recalculate. So I can change this to 20. So look over here to the right. This is 79.80. If I come off of that, I'll now be at 8,400. I change this once again to 25. We're now at 87.50. Just like Excel, when you make a modification to one, it's linked to another and it may cascade down. So different types of concepts that you can apply. Once you do that, you can come into the Actaris tab within the Smart Excel visual and go ahead and hit save. When you hit save, this is going to write the data back to the database. And for today, I'm going to just manually refresh the report. So we have the 87,550. Now you can see the 87,550 is located there. So you have a lot of flexibility with seeing the data change here, seeing the data change within a normal Power BI visual or a KPI card within Power BI. What we can also do is we can insert. So you have the same concepts of being able to insert new rows, new columns, be able to do all kinds of different type of formatting. But again, we're still in Power BI, even though this looks and feels like Excel. We have different sheets that we can open up below, uh, just, like, just like Excel. And we have the ability to insert different formulas. We can even do our own Excel functions. So we can do like a sum function. We can do trend lines. You can do conditional formatting. All of that still works. The objective, though, is to take the data that is stored inside of this Excel visual in Power BI and write the data back to the database. So extremely powerful in being able to do that live. Now, we'll also be able to do is come in here, for, an ex for example, and upload. So let's say you have a predefined Excel template already that you've configured. I'm gonna go ahead and use the one that fortunately is broken, but we'll still be able to use it for today's purpose. So I wanna import this into Power BI. To do this normally, it would take a very long time. You almost have to recreate this in Power BI. We're making it so simple that you can come into the, the Actaris Smart Excel visual, go into file, you can export, by the way, that is one piece, but import this Excel. So let me just pull this in here, point to the right file. Okay. Where's my, there we go. Oops, sorry, I have it open. I need to close it. 
There we go. Okay, now I need to upload it. Oops, sorry. Chrome one, upload it here. Don't need that. And there you go. So simply by taking an Excel file, just make sure that it's closed, uh, upload it, it will take all of the formatting options. It'll take the exact same look and feel. It's gonna copy over all of the various tabs. So there's the 2000 and the 250 that we have created. Here's the position planning that we were changing. And of course you can come in, you can add all the different features that we just talked about to modify it here. And they're all linked to that Actaris function. So if I start changing data, this data will automatically upon saving it, will write back to the database and be incorporated into the broader view of all of your different visuals that you have within Power BI. We believe that this visual itself is going to be a game changer because think about the visuals that you currently use today, the matrix visual, the Excel, uh, the sorry, matrix visual, the table edit visual, the visual planning, the copy visual, there's a total of eight of them. All of these visuals can now be linked to this smart Excel visual. So you can have a list of all of your dimensions. So your dimension data. So you wanna use this for master data management. Uh, all the same components that you have in Excel are available to you and even being able to utilize data, copy data very easily, which sometimes can be hard, which is normal Power BI visuals. This is making it very easy to take the what everyone is already familiar with and embed it directly into a tool that they love, which is Power BI to visualize data and still have that write back capability intact. So taking all of your Excel spreadsheets, migrating them into Power BI, turning them into that write back engine provides you infinite possibilities of how you can use this solution. Which leads me to kind of the last concept here. And that is what we call rapid result packs. There are a variety of different pre-packaged solutions that we offer, some that cover asset management, financial reporting and HR, FX risk. We have one for the healthcare industry. This was a very, a very cool project that we worked on um, with a partner. They wanted to be, uh, this healthcare company was a hospital. They wanted to be able to keep track of all of the different people that come through the door. They wanted to track hospital bed utilization because that was their metric uh, and, and other metrics, of course. So we created an app for that. We have one for SNOP, workforce planning, demand planning, project planning. Uh, this is a really cool one, uh, project management, where you can embed all of the different projects. You can link the projects to finance to see the CD downstream impact of that and the profitability associated with your projects. You can all have Gantt charts built in. You can move statuses of projects, which again is all input, right? When we think about what we're trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis is when we're changing information, we're trying to input. So not only is Actaris built for proper planning, it's also built for real-time simulation. It's built for any type of business problem that you may have, which brings up the whole concept of these rapid result packs. So here, we have the uh, a new template, which is our project management template, capturing all the different individuals, so employees, what projects that they're working on, how many hours they work on each of the project, what are the actual hours that were allocated, are they below or below? So just to having that visualization element is important around data to help make those strategic business decisions. We can come in here and we can go ahead and click on this Gantt chart which is utilizing an Actaris Gantt chart visual versus looking at the CTC plus hours. We have all of our filtering mechanisms on the left-hand side, making the organization very clean. And then over here for a specific project that we have uh, outlined, we can see all the different steps associated with it. Who's assigned to those projects? Sorry, let me make this full screen for everyone. Who's assigned to those projects? And if you wanted to, this is enabling that write back capability. So I can change this, the status by double clicking, I can see that this person is the resource assigned to this. This one's 100% completed. If I wanted to change any of these metrics, I certainly can. I can also drag this over. So if this particular task is now 79% complete, you can make that modification, hit save. This will write back the data and recalculate everything appropriately. So having using this for timesheet systems, entering in time, 
allocating those to certain projects, connecting the projects to, to forecasting. So you can start to see how you spread this solution across the organization, but keeping the foundation the same, which means that maintenance is easy. It's kind of thinking like if you were to buy a BMW, a Mercedes, a Chevy, and a Ford, they're all four different cars. You may know how to change in oil, but they're going to be different in each of the different cars, which provides that additional level of complexity. And that compounds the more cars you have, or in our case, the more systems that you have. If you were able to create a car that was the same across all four of those different categories, it would make things a lot easier because the oil, the oil tank and the oil uh, stick is in the same place. Everything is the same. Everyone's using the same thing. So just make things a lot easier which ultimately increases that user adoption. I don't care how good any system in this world is, if the users don't adopt it, it's completely meaningless for the business. And the uniqueness of our technology and the Microsoft ecosystem specifically is that you can tailor a solution specific to your business. And that's extremely powerful. We are coming to you versus you coming to us. Are you fitting your processes into our platform? We're building a, pl a platform to fit your processes. And of course, always going into more details on where uh, best practices lie. If you want a little bit more information around our rapid result packs on our website underneath solutions, we do have examples of these. You can click into uh, most of them and play around with the data. If you're interested in seeing some of the metrics in the hospitality industry, ESG, government contract, there's a, a long list of them and more will be coming and be, be uploaded. And uh, just with the, uh, the time remaining, I wanna go through something that I think is gonna be helpful for everyone, which is the knowledge base. So the knowledge base, you have the ability to, uh, first off, if you have an issue or you have a question, please utilize the support icon here at the very bottom right corner. This will help navigate you through the, the help center or the knowledge base, as well as ask a certain question that may be addressed by our customer support team. We have this very easy URL-like uh, experience where you can type in a specific question that you're trying to, or a, an answer that you're trying to look for based on a certain question. So if we go into, let's say, July, we type in July. The reason I'm typing into July is because we have our release notes. So we have July, June, May, all of them are built into the platform. And if we go into the July version, you can see we're trying to organize the data in a better way to make it very easy for people to kind of navigate through the pages because there's a lot of information. So we have the copy visual, we have the Gen 2 matrix visual, we have the Excel online with some of the things that we filled, we changed. And as you can see, there's tons of new features and fixes. And you'll notice that there's more help guides. There are a lot more hands-on videos that are recording someone going through step-by-step step how to actually action these, things to be careful of or be aware of when you're doing this. Uh, as you can see, a lot more screenshots, which are always helpful, more videos. So this just ultimately gives the user a better experience as they're going through the knowledge base and learning the technology. And once again, we have our own partner training program that we can uh, enable for any, any customer. So if you have questions about certain things and you just wanna learn the technology a little bit more, kind of think of it as the way you've learned Power BI, the way you've learned Excel, if you learn Actaris and you put all those things together, just think of what you can create for the business and really empower users to create a, a common ecosystem. So that is an important piece of development that was released, which is the new knowledge base, which has a lot more content. I encourage everyone to go through you can go to June, you can go to July, you can go to any month and review the different release notes uh, that we have uh, launched. Uh, filter measures, I don't know if anyone has a lot of data that they're putting inside of their table edit visual. What we can do with filter measures is we can re reduce that down to, make, to, to enhance performance, going back to that fast category, zero suppression and other uh, fast um, development as well. We talk about when these are actually going to be released so every month we, we create these pages, we talk about when the actual visual will be released on our end, and it usually takes between 10 and 14 days for Microsoft to actually make it public, and all the visuals then will be uh, automatically updated on your specific reports. So really excited about the knowledge base. Give it a, give it a look. 
let us know if you have any feedback. If you have any issues, there's always that create ticket button here. You can also go into the customer portal of any open tickets that you may have that uh, that have already been answered. You can see the timeline associated with that. So that's a really another really great feature built into the Knowledge Base Center. So you can see exactly the number of tickets that you have and what the status associated with those tickets, just making that whole user experience better and better. All right, last but not least, um, I want to go into uh, one more example here. And then um, I see there's some questions I want to leave about five minutes left for questions. So we're going back into uh, the RRPs for a moment. This is something that we've you know, organized extensively. You can see we have uh, the new Smart Excel visuals. We saw the demand planning visual, all that's built in. Uh, asset management. This is a really cool one because you ab are able to use this for master data management. We worked with a large private equity company. You have all the different categories of dimensions over here that are the logic-driven dimensions, a new feature that, that came out uh, today. You'll, and there's videos on the knowledge base that will walk you through how to set that up. So what we can do is we can actually pick, let's say like accounts, we can pick accounts and we can then utilize either the table edit visual. We can also utilize the new Smart Excel visual if we wanted to, and that will showcase uh, master data management. So we can go ahead and hit the add button here, which is going to allow me to change data. Uh, we can go into viewing certain hierarchies. So as we change data, here's the hierarchy. If we have new clients, we want to be able to add new clients to this screen as well, which is just using our normal table edit visual, which can be downloaded directly from the Microsoft App Source. Uh, but of course, you can also use the Excel visual if you wanted to. So very flexible, just using this to collect data from individuals to provide feedback. For uh, We hear this a lot with clients that they have all this AI information, but they want to be able to modify the AI information based on their business. So that's providing feedback. So utilizing Actaris to incorporate the feedback from humans and machines together into one platform and making it very easy to do that with full control on what people can change. As you can see, there's this locking mechanism here. Can't change this column, but every other column, I do have the ability to change or I can even add a new column. We can copy existing columns. Uh, you can see that there's nothing above here. We, we have now with new release been able to control the way this looks and feels. There's a lot more options that you can, it, uh, you can modify. So visual options, you can lock certain columns. So there are some new, some new ones in here that are located in the uh, release notes. And uh, just to make it a little bit more User friendly. This is probably one of the best features that I utilize on a day to day basis with Actaris, which, by the way, like when I say use it, it's not we demo it. We actually use our own product internally. We use it for, our, we have it as our timesheet system. We have it for our uh, revenue calculations. We use it for budgeting and planning. We, we use our platform as many times as we possibly can. So we don't go out and purchase technology. We actually build our own technology, leveraging Power BI, Excel, and Actaris together. And this this feature right here is extreme. Oh, sorry, no, this feature right here is extremely powerful. If you have this enabled on all of our visuals, what that means is you start to add or save, let's say, a new client. Since we're in the client portal here, you add that new client, you hit save, it automatically will refresh for you. So you don't actually have to go in and click the refresh button, which you certainly can if you want to, but it allows that automatic refresh. So it saves a tremendous amount of time, at least for me where I can go in, I can make a modification, I can hit save and I'll see all my reports refresh and I can see the results of that. So all of these are, are some of them are brand new to the visuals themselves. But again, going back to that knowledge base, that's where you'll be able to see all that information and it'll walk you through a guided tour of that. All right, so I'm gonna give, now that we're about four minutes left, there looks like there's a few questions, so just bear with me while I pull up those questions here. It's not the easiest thing to look. Why can't I see that? Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, Eric, I'm saying I hate when people mess with my sheets too. <laughs> uh, okay, can you import from existing Excel files and include the formatting? What does it say? Uh, that would be saved so much work. Yes, yeah, so the answer is yes. If any Excel spreadsheet, and I'll just give you a quick example of this. I'll make, I'll modify one Excel or I'll create a, a quick Excel like Excel, doesn't matter 
what you have in this Excel, what you name this, um, you know, right? You have your own calculation. So this plus this, let's say, and then let's do over here, this divided by this. So you set up all your formatting, you set up all of your color coding, all of the normal functions that you would have, you would be able to uh, create. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save this on my desktop. Uh, okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and name this webinar test. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And I'm going to close this out because that was the first mistake that I made earlier. And I'm going to come back to the Smart Excel visual here, which was this one, sorry. So we, we uploaded this one earlier, but let's say that we want to now upload that new one. So what we have to do is on this new Smart Excel visual, we can go to File just like you would in, in Excel, in, or to import. We can say import Excel file. I'm now locating the one that we just created. And that is on my desktop. Webinar test. And as you can see, it keeps the same format. It keeps the same calculations all built in to this Excel template. Now, this is a terrible example, but what I'm trying to capture here is that you can, any, any Excel template that you have, any format that you have in Excel today, any calculation you have in Excel today, you can import into the Actera Smart Excel Visual. And on top of that, now that it's imported, you don't need that Excel template anymore. You can utilize this to create additional formulas. So I can say again, this, you know, multiply by, let's say, this and it'll calculate that for you all of the formatting options that you have here just like we did in excel i want to make that bold i want to you know put this in the middle whatever it may be adjust the the, the decimals just the width of columns uh insert like i said spark lines or different charts and different pictures all that's embedded and you can also enable this for write back so this might only be for reporting like it is for me. But if you want this number to actually be sent back to the database, like it's a calculated number off of a variety of different fields, you can easily do that through the Actera's functions that we talked about earlier, which can be embedded in the same Excel spreadsheet. So absolutely, you can take an existing Excel spreadsheet, upload it into the Smart Excel Visual, use it for reporting only, or use it for write back purposes, or both in some cases. So I wanna thank everyone. I'm sorry for the little hiccup, but there will be a video on that page. So we're always, uh, we always know things happen, but on this page, you'll actually be able to um, click on this right here, where it'll showcase different features. So discover how there's a, an eight minute YouTube video that you, can, that you can launch. And then there's also, if you want to be able to see the Smart Excel visual, which again is not released yet, but if you want to see it in action to get a little bit more comfort around how it works and see how you can embed it into your organization, you can also see this in action. I think this is also another eight minute video and it walks you through the Excel upload to the Smart Excel visual and all the conditional formatting as well as those write back functions. So I know we're over time and I want to be respectful of everyone's time today. Thank you so much for joining today's session. I hope you found it useful. We will be taking the same format going forward. So if you have any feedback on how to improve, we're more than happy to take that and make sure that for the next session we incorporate it. So the next version to come out is gonna be 24.2 and that'll be later this year. You'll have a dedicated page. We'll have another session to go over those features and we'll probably even incorporate some additional use cases of how people were applying the 24.1 uh, features to uh, their rapid resolve pack. So once again, thank you so much for your time today and really looking forward to building something, uh, building a future together and building something new. Thanks everyone.